Well, we may have about every one of us who's got things that keeps us from being perfect. Yeah. yeah. But one of these days, I'm going to be made perfect. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm, going to be, I'm going to have a glorified body. Amen. And uh, I, I'm not going to have any worries anymore. I'm, I'm going to be at home. Praise God. I'm going to be in my father's house. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. I think of that so much what my father's house meant to me when I was a child. I'm talking about my earthly father. Amen. Amen. But I've got a heavenly father that's got a home yeah. that far surpasses Amen. what my Amen. father here on Amen. earth Amen. has. And oh, I'm looking forward to that reunion that we're going to have. Oh, yes. One of these days, we're going to be reunited with our loved ones there in heaven. One of these days, me and my wife is going to be able to stroll yes. down the streets of Praise heaven God. together. And a host of people that I have never met that are my, my people yes. that I'm looking forward yes. to meeting. Brother Darren, come on up. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we humbly submit ourselves unto you this morning, God. We thank you for this opportunity to be before your people. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to help us to speak a word, God, that only you get the glory, God, and that you have laid on our hearts to speak. Lord, help me to remove myself out of the way, God. I understand, Lord, I must decrease so that you can increase. God, Lord, plant a fertile word here, God, that you can be edified, that you can be lifted up, God. It's all about you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray. Meet every need here today under the sound of my voice. We love you here today. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Clap. Hallelujah. We, we thank God for this opportunity to be here before you all. And thank God for your passion. Give your pastor a hand clap. Appreciate him. Appreciate all of you. I appreciate my wife Amen. coming out. I thank God for sparing her through that uh, car accident she just had last Amen. week. And, uh, she's still kind of banged up and bruised, but she pressed on out. I tried to get her to stay behind, but she wanted to press on out. So we thank God for her as well. And I, truly, I was listening to the, the mother when I was playing up here and about the accident and uh you know, uh, a lot of people don't walk away from accidents. Yeah. They really don't. Yeah. And the side that she got hit on was the driver's side, the extra side she was on. But we thank God that it wasn't worse than what, you know, the call came out to be. So, like I told her, you can always get another vehicle. You know, all that materialistic stuff, that's replaceable. Yeah. But I thank God for her life. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. I do appreciate my wife. I love her. You know, I... When I took that oath and that vow 25 years ago, I meant that I did. I wanted to be to death to do what's part. And, I, and you know, most people don't understand that when you stand before God, I believe like the pastor, I really do. I believe the word of God is true. I honestly Amen. believe it with all my heart. Amen. Uh, I, you know, it took me a while when I was out in the world to get saved. But I said when I got saved and came to God, I always wanted to be for real. I always wanted to be for I want to have some something that was going to sustain me, to keep me. And keep me pressing out. And I truly tell you, I thank God for saving me, filling us with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Giving us that real gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And keeping us. Yeah. And who he is to us. We thank God. I don't plan to be before you too long, but I do believe in letting God have his way. Amen. And like I said, I didn't come. I don't come with any doctrine of divinities. or any, I'm just old-fashioned. 
who I am is old school. I believe all scripture is given by inspiration. That's what the word teaches Amen. us. So I do. I believe it. So I just believe God, you know, the way we was taught from our former pastor, you know, to seek God, get some time alone with God, even if it means pulling back to place, but praying, standing in the word, standing before God and keeping yourself humble. And I do. I believe God will lead and guide you and direct your path. We want to go into the word here. If you have your Bibles with me. I don't plan to be before you long here today, but I do believe that God have his way. Thank God for the dying. It's why I've met him <coughs> working at him. We uh, fellowship, you know, when we see each other. And we was talking about his brother today. I'm really praying for him as well. But <laughs> God is going to save him. He is. Amen. He's going to save him. I believe it by faith. Matthew 16, something I feel like the Lord laid on my heart. 16. And we're going to start with verse 13. When Jesus came to the, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Amen. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, or Jonas, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my father's which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, to thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And it will and it will give unto the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou have thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Go over here real fast with me to John chapter 6 hallelujah we're going to start with verse 32 a little bit of reading here is it okay to read a little bit yeah. hallelujah but the word is, is found up, it's found up on the word John 6 32 then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you Moses gave you not that bread from heaven but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Amen. For the bread of God is be which cometh down from heaven Amen. and giveth life unto the world. Amen. Then saith they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh Amen. to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Amen. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I shall lose nothing, but shall raise it up again in the last day. Praise God. And this is the will of him that sent me, and every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Drop down to 44 with me real fast. Same, or same chapter. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in, this, in the prophets, and they shall... Be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and that hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath, he, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on the, the, me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your scriptures here today. God, we thank you for the reading of the word, God. Help us, Lord, to speak only what you have laid on the hearts to speak to your people. Lord, that you get the glory, that you be lifted up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
I fell in this morning to speak to you. I am that bread of life. Amen. Jesus is that bread of life. Amen. He is. Amen. I remember growing up as a kid and seeking my own will and, and fleshly motivations and things that I desire to do. And I remember how uncomfortable and insecure and so perplexed on every side that I was in every my walk in life itself. And I remember how my mother was a Christian woman as far as I can remember. She was, you know, she really lived the life in front of us. You know, some people can can appear to be a Christian at church. I can appear to be saved and have salvation in front of you, but behind the scenes it could be something totally different in your home or out in the streets. But my mother actually lived a life every single day uh, before us and before the church and before people. Amen. And how she always went to God in any situation, any problem, any circumstances. She partaked of something that I didn't even know of at, the, at that time. And all she was instilling when I was a youth growing up is coming to Jesus Christ, Amen. partaking of that flesh, drinking of his blood, Amen. trying to bring all her children, all her relatives to the true living God. Yeah. See, from the beginning of time in Genesis, how God has spoken. Well, praise God. He spoke yeah. that he was going to make man in his own image. Amen. And how he presented it, he brought forth a man, Adam. And he brought forth many great men, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all those prophets. Amen. But there was none that was going to do what Jesus could do. Amen. Amen. So the Lord himself knew Already I knew. The, the Bible said that the worlds are praying already from the beginning of time. Amen. And how he spoke a word from his mouth. Yeah. And how the Bible said that word became flesh. Amen. And it dwelt among us. Amen. That yeah. true word was Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. See, Jesus is the only way. Amen. He is the salvation man. He's the truth. He's the life. Amen. He's the only way that you and I in this world is going to make it today. Amen. See, I'm not looking to politicians. I'm not. I'm not looking to the law enforcement. I'm not looking to my mother. I'm not looking to dad. But I'm looking to the author and the finisher. Of my Jesus is the answer. Yes. He's the only way. He's the truth. He's the life. You say, how do you know? Because I partake of something many years ago that I could not let go. You say, you don't know what I've been going through. You don't know what nobody's been going through. But there is a God in heaven that looks high and he looks low. Yeah. His ears are always open to our cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to believe. Praise we got to have faith to believe Amen. in a God, the true living God, that word that was spoken Amen. and was made flesh. Amen. Over in John 14, it said, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. There is a true living God. Amen. It was done at the cross. Amen. You got to believe. You got to know him. You got to partake of him. Yeah. Every single day, this, this is a true walk. Every single day of our life, Amen. this is a walk. We need to be pressing further and pushing further and further into God. Amen. The Bible tells us, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be Amen. lifted up. Amen. It's all about Jesus. See, I don't have time. I'm, a, I'm, I'm away from traditions of men and tradition of religion and trying to sound like this and sound like that and separation. It's all about Jesus. Amen. God is looking for a people and a place that's going to be on one accord. Everybody's going to be on one accord, not perplexed. A peculiar people. Yeah. Everybody's going to sound the son. He's going to hear that cry. He's going to be all confessing him. For he is the only one that's going to get the glory. <laughs> God is still who he say he is. From the beginning of time when he was spoken and his word went to that womb, Mary, how she carried him. And as cousin John himself was in his mother's womb almost simultaneously at the same time. And how John, who, uh, who was Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth, carried John. And how when Mary came to the house, that power was so strong. Yeah, it was. At the yeah. salutation, the Bible said that boom, leaped 
yeah. inside of her. Yeah. That power Praise was about God. to come forth. Praise and how John himself, when he became old and started preaching all across and baptizing, even as great, Jesus said he was nourished none born of flesh that was greater than John the Baptist. Amen. But John himself knew there was someone greater than him. Amen. He saw him coming and he told him, Behold, that Lamb of God, Amen. which takes away the sins of the world. Yes. He knew that his, he wasn't even worthy to be down the shoes in the life. Yes. Why? Because he knew that the king had arrived. The king was on his way. Yes. And that's the same God that we all have to be determined to serve. Yes. The true living God, you say, that happened back in the day, but it's the same God that happened back then. He's the same God. As the yes. He is. He's the same God. God is still in the healing business. He's still in the delivering business. He's still in the saving business. He's still in the way making business. Whatever you have need of, he, he'll do it. Yeah. He'll do it. Amen. You say, I don't know. I knew a lady. This is a true story. God is my witness. I stayed in the house of God a lot of time. I know a lady. Stricken with cancer. They sent her home. Matter of fact, I was, I was her grandson's uh, case manager when I was working at the juvenile facility. I was her grandson's case manager. And how she was stricken with cancer completely in her body. And she, you talk about a woman, I'm being honest, about 300 some pounds. And they sent her home on hospice. They said there was nothing else they could do. Nothing. They had done everything. She didn't say, Lord, there's nothing else they can do. And I talked to her on the phone. And she said, she said, baby, she said, I'm, the Lord is going to heal me of this. Amen. And you know how you hear people say that. You, you do. You hear people say that. But you don't really know where their faith is at. We know God can do it, but I really, you know, I really can't say where your faith is at. You really can't say where my faith is at. But I hear people say, and so she said, I'm, God is going to heal me of this. I believe God. And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, Miss, Miss Bertha, if you believe God, he's going to heal you. He's got to do it. Yeah. And so how she went on, and I lied out, months went by, months. Actually, I didn't, even, I didn't forget, kind of forget about it because I hadn't heard from her. Months went by. And her son, he ended up getting locked up, we uh, discharged him up to a higher level. He went to a higher level than what we was on. And so I completely lost contact after that. So about eight, nine months went by. I got a call at work sitting at my desk. I heard his little voice on the phone. And she said, Mr. Burst, do you know who this is? And I said, no. I said, the voice sounds kind of familiar, but can you help me? And she said, this is Sister Bertha. She said, do you know that they sent me home. I got down to 87 pounds. Now, she was at 300 pounds. I lied now. She said, I, I got down to 87 pounds. She said, I believe God. I believe in the true yeah. living Jesus Christ. I told the Lord I wanted to be healed. I believed in that word. I held on to the word. I kept the faith. And how she said that she kept feeling better. She started feeling better. And she called her doctor and said, can I come back? I, I want you to check me out. I'm starting to feel better. I'm starting to feel strength. I'm starting to feel life again. I'm starting to feel, you know, like I can go on. Right. Well, they didn't want to reschedule. They had already put on house. So they didn't want to see her again. They kept saying there was nothing else they could do. She kept calling. She kept going back to him, just like that woman with the unjust judge. She kept going back to the doctor, calling him. Can you see me again? So finally they came. They scheduled her appointment. Sent her on in. Brought her in. Ran all cattle tests. Came back out. They don't know where the cancer went. Everything was in complete remiss. Everything was completely gone. She said, all oh, my hair has grown back. All oh, my eyebrows has grown back. My weight is coming back. I'm eating food again. I'm back in church again. She said, matter of fact, will you come up here and preach for us in St. Louis? I said, God is still doing what he said he'll do. He is. He's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. The Bible said, Behold, He changes not. Let you sons of Jacob or consume. We got to believe in a true living God. Yeah. My way yeah. is not, it don't matter. My, my, what I do, my, it's not about my way. It's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. It is it's all about Him. Amen. What He wants, this perfect will for our life. Amen. Nicodemus came to Him, cried out, What must I do to be saved? 
one of the most important sentences that could have ever been had. Lord, what must we do to be saved? See, one coming to Christ, you got to believe first and foremost. Just like the scriptures teach, you got to believe first and foremost that He is a God, that He exists. You won't even come to Him unless He draws you. But you got to know that He is what I need here today. Amen. I am that I am. He is everything that you need right now in this world. We got to be saved. We got to be filled with the real gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, when that real Spirit of God dwells in us, it keeps sin and reproves sin from our life. Anything that looks like sin, we turn. It, it makes that inside and inward man say something is not right about this. You need to get away. Amen. That's the real spirit of God. Yeah. That real bread of life that you want to partake of. I partook of this bread of life many years ago. I've been up. I've been down. I've been shaken. I've been thrown. But I will not go back. Oh, my God. Persevering me, keeps pushing me. That's that real breath of life that I partake in. That bread of life. This is better than any high that you can have. It is. It's better than any drug that they can offer you in this world. It's better than any alcohol, any drink that you can offer. This this drink here, you would never thirst again. You won't thirst again. Did not out of that natural world, you would never thirst of that natural world again. Man. Why? Because I, I, I've been taken. I've been born again. You got to be born again. We all yeah. got to be born again. Yeah. All over again. Yeah. Have we been born again? Yeah. There was a woman in the Bible. Issue of blood. Twelve long years. Went to all these physicians. All across the place. And we all know in a particular time when they said the multitude of people. Now think about the multitude. You go to a ball game like St. Louis, like the Blues or something, or, or Cardinals, you know you see a multitude of people. And you're trying to walk down those little corridors and get to your seat, or wherever it may be. And how this woman, you can imagine how she pressed her way through for a little frail body, trying to press through. Why? Because she knew that that was the bread that she needed. Yeah. If I can just get to him and touch just yeah. him That's of right. his going yeah. She knew she'd be made whole. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. knew it. Amen. And how the Bible said, you know, even in that, that state, that those times and in, in that country, the tradition, a woman can even be seen in public in that condition. But how she believed that so much that she needed, she knew what she was missing. Amen. If I could just Amen. get to him Amen. and just Amen. touch the him of his garment. And how she went through that crowd and everybody I'm sure was touching him, bumping all into him. But the Bible said that he knew, he knew that because virtue Amen. left him. She touched him. Her faith reached out to him and yeah. instantly she was made whole. Yeah. Yeah. That was her bread of life. She needed to get to him. See, it ain't nothing that God won't do. The Bible tells us over in Numbers that he's not a man that he should lie. Come on. Neither he's the son of man that he should repent. Yeah. You know, whatever God speaks to you, he's got to do it. Yeah. He's got to do it. He's a God of his word. He's a God of his, yeah. his discipline. He's a God of the cross. He's a God of, of healing. He's a God of whatever we need. He is what we need here today. Amen. He is. He's all that you need. Yeah. You say, I've tried, but have you really tried Jesus? Amen. I've tried to do it this way, but have you really tried Jesus? Amen. I've tried, it, but it didn't work out. But have you really tried Jesus? Come on. Jesus is the only way. Yeah. He's the truth. Amen. He's the lie. He's the way man. He's the answer. Amen. You know, I went through a battle some years ago with my wife and I. And how I almost left the area was some years ago. And I was off of a job. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, back in 03. She can help me bring back to my memory. I think it was back in 03. We had just had our daughter. And how I was, I was laid off. And I was going to school, you know, I had to go to school to be in this WIA program. They call it the WIA Workers Investment Act. And so they put me in a program to go to school and they paid and sent me through college and all that. And I was struggling really bad. I, I was so bad I couldn't even buy a job. I just couldn't. I didn't, you know, just couldn't even buy a job. Just struggling mentally. Just got this baby here. And my wife wasn't working. My mind was going through. It felt like I was, the, the pressure was coming in. Like I was going to have a nervous breakdown. 
and how I went on and I could hear the devil. You could hear the devil talking to you. Where's your God at now? Where's that God that you serve? Yes. I've got you out here. Where is he? And how I would stay steadfast as much as I possibly could, sincerely, in my heart. I kept going to church, never stopped going to church, kept praying, kept reading the word, but still my mind was mentally going through. And how days, and I would even go to St. Louis, call my auntie and stay with them some nights and, you know, trying to look for work. You know, I was looking for work, you know, sincerely. And I would stay with them some nights, leaving my wife and my kids down here at home and for days at a time and Still wouldn't get a job, have a few interviews. And I even had an interview. Uh, the, the recruiter was recruiting at the college. And he came to the college. I went for an interview. He said, I just, I just, you just overqualified. I'm like, well, why are you recruiting? Let's go. I'm overqualified. Why would you even come here? <laughs> so I still didn't get that job. You know, I'm so disappointed and scared. But my wife can tell you, I don't know how. I was drawing draw that important. And the Lord always brings this back to me in my darkest times of time to show you that he was God. Yeah. And I was drawing my unemployment. And I lied not. Didn't, didn't, didn't have much. My unemployment started. And we noticed that it seemed like we had a little more left over than we even before I, when I was working. And I don't know how that's possible. I really don't. I don't know how that's possible. But you start noticing some increase somewhere in, in you know, you didn't with probably one fourth or one third of a check compared to what you used to get. And how we went through, and the, they sent me a letter, and they said, Your unemployment is about to run out. It was six months later, your unemployment is about to run out. And I was starting to get worried again because I didn't have a job. You know, I was looking faithful. I even went in and put it at McDonald's. I lied not. My wife can tell you. I was at White Castles. I was just desperate anywhere, wherever I could work. I was ready to dig ditches if I had to. But couldn't even find a job. And how they said my unemployment was running out. And I went on and was kind of starting to get a little stressed. But I kept saying, God, you got this all under control. My wife, she was so calm. She was like, the Lord got it all in control. And I'm, you know, I'm like, ooh, how did she say that? You know, she don't know what I'm going through right now. She's just so calm about it, you know. And how I, you know, and I got a letter. And they said the federal government had extended Gave it an extension on unemployment. And I was like, oh, yes, thank you, Jesus. So we stayed. I went on through that session of unemployment. And they said, when that extension ran out, they said, your unemployment is getting ready to run out now. You've exhausted all purpose. Well, guess what? They gave another extension on unemployment. And, and when it got down to the last extension, God is my witness. I lied out. I was out working with a buddy of mine on his uncle's home. And I told him, I was laying with lying down there. I said, I'm tired of this. I said, I need to go to work. I need to, you know, get a job. Amen. He said, Oh, you believe in God for one? I said, Yes, I, I believe, I believe in God. I said, God, I need a job. I gotta go to work, Lord. I said, You see what's getting ready to happen. This was on a Sunday. Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, I got a letter from the state of Missouri. It said, You applied for a job. Such and such a month ago, or are you interested? If you are, respond by such such a day. I ran to that house so fast. I called that number. They said, can you come in for an interview? They hired me on the spot. <laughs> Just like that. The Lord blessed us. I lied not almost two whole years. I lied not on the park. Not one thing was cut off in the house. We didn't starve to death. We didn't go black. It. And the Lord spoke to me afterwards. I took you through that trial. I tested you. Yeah. We all gonna be tested. Yeah. Our faith's yeah. gotta be tried. Yeah. God's gotta see. Are you willing to stick with me yeah. through the storm? Yeah. Are you willing to go with me all the way like you say you are? Yeah. Do you love me unconditionally yeah. like you say you do? Yeah. Who would you forsake to go all the way to be with me? Yeah. The true living Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, when Jesus stretched forth those hands on that cross for you and I. For the remission of our sins, he laid his life down, the Bible said. Yeah. And he, he laid it down, the Bible said, he gave the Father him power to pick it up again. Yeah. The true yeah. living Jesus Christ is what we need. We're talking about Jesus, yeah. our bread of life. Yeah. See, he was all I needed in that whole time. That's what I was, he was trying to get me to understand. Yeah. It wasn't about the degree. It wasn't. He was trying to get me to partake 
of that bread of life. He was showing me, I am what you need. I am the one who's going to take you through. I am the one that you need to depend on. I am who I say I am. I am Jesus, the true living God, the king of all kings. He is the way man. We ought to be stirred up for God. It's time to get out of our sloping and our slapping. It's time to come out of the valley of decisions. It's time to find out who we're going to serve. And we're going to serve God and we're going to serve man. I've been preaching and teaching and telling people everywhere you go, it's time to get more determined now than ever. You got to get more gritty than ever. We got to get to the place where God, there is nothing that's going to separate me from the love of God. I ain't going to let nothing hinder me. You can't let, if mama don't go, you still got to be willing to run on. If daddy don't go, you still got to be ready to run on. If wife don't go, you still got to be ready to run on. Why? Because there's a God, there's a kingdom that's about to be taken out there. Amen. It is. Heaven is waiting on us. It's out there, it's waiting. I'm like the pastor. I want to be, I want to make my call in my election sure. I do. Amen. When it's time for me to breathe this last breath, and there's no more, you won't get the next breath. Don't want to be kicking, don't want to be screaming. I want to be rejoicing because I'm going home Amen. to be with the king. I'm going home to be with the king. Hallelujah. We've got to be ready to go home and be with the king. Ask yourself sincerely, have you partaken of that bread? If God was to call you tonight, after this service, whatever it may be, are we ready to go home and be with the king? Yeah. Are you truly ready? Amen. We gotta be ready. It's time out for hatred in our hearts. It is. Amen. It's time out for backbite. Amen. It's time out for jealousy, yeah. envy, and strife, yeah. and lust. You know, sometimes you gotta you turn your change your company, keep peers away from you. That's gonna keep dragging you down. People that's talking negative and talking criticism to you. Sometimes you gotta change the channel. Just change it on. Them. Gotta get away from you. Why? It don't mean that you're nobody than nobody else. Why? Because there's a kingdom. I'm pressing. We're all pressing towards that mark. The prize of a high call. Yeah. Which yeah. is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. It's all about him. Amen. It's all about him. Amen. When I started this walk, this journey years ago, it is. I found love. I did. I found him. Yeah. I truly found him. I was a man on a mission. I was about to end my life. Before I came to Christ, I lied not. Tempted and tried a couple times in St. Louis. I'm so unhappy. Going through an abusive life. Why? But God himself knew he had a perfect plan for me. Yeah, yeah. He saw this man, this boy, that was unworthy. I'll never be worthy. I'm telling you the truth. I'll never be worthy to do what he did for me. Yeah. Yes. But he saw. He saw fit <laughs> to reach out. Lift me out of the gutter. Hallelujah. And said, I'm going to make a preacher out of him. Yeah. I'm going to... Yeah. Teach him. Yeah. I'm going to show him. I'm going to feed him. Yeah. I'm going to save him. And I'm going to bless him. He was so gracious to even do me enough to bless him. I would never be worthy. But it was done through Jesus. I do. I thank him. I still get four today. Because I know where I came from. I know what he did for me. I wasn't supposed to be standing here with you today. I was going to end it. Be done with it all. But thank God he had mercy. That's so. That's the one beautiful thing about him. We are whole things against each other in our sins, but all we have to go to him and do is repent. Amen. He's gracious. He's yeah. mercy enough Amen. to forgive us. Amen. The Bible tells us that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. He did. He gave. Oh, I think about that a lot. Can I lay my only son down for the men and women of the world? I mean, could you really? But God was so gracious. He gave his only to God's son. Yes. So that you and I and this whole world could have eternal life. Amen. 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 You have a decision to make. We all have a decision to make. Yes. Determine in your heart sincerely. A lot of you have come so far. You've come so far. You think that your prayers have been hindered. But God has heard every prayer yes, that you have sent up before him. Yes. He's acknowledged. He's upheld every prayer. That has went up before him. Amen. You're getting ready to reap the benefits. Yeah. Yes. You are. You're getting ready to reap what Amen. you have sown. Amen. You've sown good things unto him. You're getting ready to reap. Amen. Count it not. You know, a, a, count it not a fault that your prayers and your labor has been in vain. God is true. 
to his word. Amen. He's going to meet you. He's going to yeah. be there. He's going to bless you. Amen. We love him. How many love him here today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yes, we love him here today. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with that. Anybody need prayer, we'll pray with you. We will. We'll pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do. We thank God for who he is. Praise I don't ever be in a hurry to get out. You know, when, some, when I came to Christ, somebody was praying for me. Amen. I remember the old ways, the altars. I do. I remember the old ways. My mother used to drag us to tent revivals with the sawdust. I'd all down in the south, load up on a church bus. And they have two or three services a day, and we sitting there with our lips powdered out and ready to cry. But you knew you been to act up. You knew you been to act up. <laughs> but we are sitting there powdered. But Mama knew the real way. Yeah. And I thank God that she's still serving God here today. I do. She's in her 70s now. She's still going on. Amen. She's still persevering. We've come too far, saints. Amen. We have. Amen. You all have come too far. Yes. To come too far to turn back. Yes. The yes. whole the true living of God. Yeah. It was all done through the cross. Amen. The Bible tells us heaven and earth shall pass away. But what? My words will pass. This word will not. Amen. This word will always remain here. Oh. Thank you. Amen. Why? Because the word was made flesh. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ. Find your hands with us. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you here today, God. We tried to be as brief as we could. But, Lord, we thank you for your people, God. We thank you, Lord. ask you here today, God, that have laid something on the heart, God. Give us endurance, that power to partake of that bread from you, to drink of your blood, God, every single day, to deny ourselves, God, and lay down our life, to pick up that cross and to follow you daily. Lord, help us to prepare our souls and our mentality to go on for you to the end, and you call us home. And this I ask in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. The Lord is truly worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. If anybody needs prayer, we'll pray with him. You know, I, I prayed for a guy and over at a church in uh, Fredericktown. They told him he had liver cirrhosis of the liver.